Hello everyone. Um, I don't follow a whole lot of YouTube metal personalities, uh, but if one of them is going to put out a video concentrating on composition, chances are I'm going to check it out. Um, given that composition is one of my main passions, I uh, will want to hear what people have to say about it. I am always looking for ways to improve upon what I do and refine it. and. Um, even every day I'm still learning and even I don't feel that I'm compromising my message by uh, obtaining new ways to expand upon the palette that I'm using uh, and I really do love knowing that there's all this potential yet to uncover so if someone regardless of age or experience is going to put out a video talking about metal composition chances are I'm going to check it out and uh, the one that I am going to discuss today is one by Taylor Danley, who, given my experience with this channel, is more of a, a gear guy. He really enjoys um, how you can find the sounds of metal. He's a death metal guy. And um, I, uh, I I don't dislike this guy, full disclosure. You know, there's a lot of guys on, on YouTube I adamantly dislike, but I find him to be, uh, he has this kind of infectious energy about him. You know, he's young, he's excited about metal. I remember being that before the crushing weight of worldwide mediocrity just strangled the life out of me. But he doesn't have that yet, and um, he's excited by the sounds of metal, the message of metal, and putting it together himself. Um, that being said, I was very taken aback by the video that he just put out, which he did to um, help his viewers overcome writer's block. They, they asked him, how, how does one write a riff? And um, at the most basic level, if you want to sound death metal, there is a uh, compositional formula to the intervals that are going to give you the kind of colors you want to play death metal. He's, he's a death metal guy, so it's going to be a death metal focus type of thing. Um, and, you know, we've talked about him on this channel. If you use uh, chromatic notes, if you use power chords, fourths, thirds, whether in chords or in just uh, intervals, palm mutes, tremolo picking, purely aesthetically, if you use that stuff, you're going to sound death metal, um, at least on, on the basis of a riff. As for how to construct a death metal song, he doesn't talk about that here, he's mainly talking about the riff itself. So I'm going to start off the video by showing you a little bit of his He's just kind of jamming around and making some like death metal type of, of riffage. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you that and it'll give you a, a quick insight as to his basic vocabulary. <laughs> now one of the things I kind of want to talk about. So you get that right away, you see the chromatic uh, uh, descending note pattern, you see power chords, you see palm mutes. Um, you know, it's a chunky death metal kind of groovy riff. Um, it's not quite old school sounding. It kind of is in that it's power chord based, but it's got more of that like new school kind of groove to it. Uh, but it kind of gets you an idea of where he's at in terms of his like, basic, I, if someone hands me a guitar, this is what I'm gonna fuck around with. Uh, going into this is inspiration. I find like inspiration and like a lot of aesthetic things, especially for writing, these sort of riffs. I have this Jackson Warrior here. Now you don't need a Jackson Warrior. You don't need any guitar specifically. I just find that this guitar really inspires me to create a lot of different things. Also, I can... That's one of the first things that uh, I actually agree with in his video. It's very fucking stupid uh, because it's, it's gonna come from within you, but people will draw inspiration from anything. And when I'm going to write a song, write a, a riff or whatever, I usually just write songs, but... Um, I, depending on the project that's for, I will gravitate towards a guitar that I have assigned to that project. I'll show you some examples. So this is the guitar that I wrote the last RL full length on. Uh, I wanted to get into that death metal spirit, so I, you know I got a guitar that aesthetically kind of screams death metal. Um, over here, uh, this is this black Ibanez Star Destroyer is what I wrote the Deorbit full length on that just came out. Uh, and I wanted to take that template that I established and when I started writing the next record I wanted to use the same shape but have a different color to it kind of the opposite where I could tell the same story but with a different color and 
I understand this is all superstition. It's not tangible. It's stupid. But sometimes, you know, you got to get a little bit pushed mentally to create. And it kind of helped me get into that mindset. This here is a Telecaster. I wrote the Acanthropus EP on. Uh, that's a blackened death metal project that, to me, had a more of a traditional metal vibe to it. So I wanted to write on a very traditional kind of guitar. A Telecaster is very traditional to me. Um, so it makes sense to me what Taylor is saying as far as how aesthetics will inspire him, even though, yes, it is absolutely stupid. So then he talks about a situation where if your guitar doesn't inspire you as you're holding it, maybe think about writing the song drums first. And I could see that potentially being inspiring. Uh, maybe you will come across some uncharted rhythmic territory doing so. Um, I have done it before and it's interesting. I managed to still have my same voice and character at the end of it, but uh, what he proceeds to do in this video is to not write the drums, which I did, uh, as you know, compose the actual beat, but he takes, due to the uh, modern convenience he has of certain plugins, he takes pre-existing beats and uh, copies, pastes them, and then tries to play over that. And he, there is a lot of liberty, which I'm going to show you in what he's doing. You can take the existing beat, make it sound any way you want, but for the most part, people are going to grab the beat, make it a 4-4 four, four time signature, and I've talked to you guys about that as well, um, to not feel like locked in to that rhythmic four beat pattern. Um, if you listen to stuff like Incantation and you feel yourself getting lost into the rhythm, that is because they are directly trying to turn conventional music on its head by ignoring the comforts of commonplace time signatures. So if people are gonna go ahead and just grab the 4-4 and write over it, um, you're really kind of negating what you could be doing by snatching bits and pieces of a, a drum pattern. But uh, we'll continue with the video. Kind of part. You can just start writing a song this way as well. So I have this song loaded up here and uh, this is the last part in it. <laughs> Sort of like a slow caveman beatdown type riff. Uh, you can see down here on the bottom I have follow host selected and I have the loop feature enabled and I just have the bars 145 through 153 selected up top here. That way it doesn't just restart at the beginning of the song while I'm trying to write this part. We have something kind of slow there so I'm definitely going to want to pick the tempo back up. This is common in not only heavy music but like all different kinds of music. It's good to have changes where they slow down and they speed up again. That contrast really gives us like heaviness, you know? So he at least he understands basic dynamics. You know, a lot of these kind of blast beat focus bands do not understand that your fast frenzied passage will not be fast and frenzied sounding if there's no contrast with a neighboring part. So he does have that, which is good to see. So um, I'm going to want some blast beaty type part here. I'm going to clear all these filters. Under the grooves tab, over here on the left, you can see the superior libraries that I have. And I'm just going to focus on the stock Superior Drummer 3 library. Now, I personally suggest getting some of these add-on packs. There's a ton of different MIDI grooves that go into them. But there's a lot of really good stuff in just the core library here. So let me open that up. And we're going to go down to up tempo straight and then you can see we have things categorized into different songs with different tempos up here i'm gonna go straight to this blast metal i actually use drum beats from this library a lot even though i have a bunch of the other add-ons i really like this one so so we have a bunch of different blast beats here maybe let's listen to some pre-core stuff i want some I actually really hate these samples, mainly because uh, that snare is so bright and in, and in front of the mix that uh, it's not, it starts audibly leading the passage, whereas the cymbal and bass drum in a blast beat should lead the passage and the snare kind of fills the, the backbeat behind it. It's like a double time thrash beat. With this, when that snare is obscuring the, the cymbal, it, it could potentially flip your rhythm around if you're trying to write to it. Um, but he's about to grab those templates and then uh, add all kinds of fills and stuff. Like he actually can make it sound reasonably human, which is pretty crazy. Something that's kind of like fill, blast, fill, blast. That's just what I'm hearing in my head. So let's go into the fill section here and let's see if we can. <laughs> 
I think this one's gonna work. We're gonna drag this down. I have a bunch of different groove libraries for Superior Drummer, but I'm going to stick to the core library so that way, uh, you know, you don't have to feel. So he went with the bomb blast. I'm gonna skip forward to where he starts actually writing riffs on top of the drums that he grabbed here. Um, and you'll see based on him just kind of looking at the waveform uh, or the MIDI actually and, and uh, just trying to write based on like the visual cues of what the drums are doing. It's uh, kind of a, a weird way to try to riff, but he's not even looking at his guitar when he's fucking around on it because he understands the basic uh, building blocks of death metal that I talked to you about before. Um, and you know, if you're gonna be writing four fret death metal, you don't have to move around a lot. Uh, and we're going to minimize Superior Drummer for now. And let's listen back to that. Okay, let's play to that a little bit. So he managed to have, uh, he managed to write a riff that has a little bit of internal monologue. Um, it's not bad for a very basic death metal riff. Um, the basic motif there has a little bit of development within the riff. That's cool. You don't see a whole lot of that in modern songwriting. So he already has a leg up based on just fucking around on what a lot of these newer kids are doing. <laughs> Okay, that works. Let's try that. And one, try to get a second one in. Okay, we can remove the loop there. Uh, let's actually copy and paste that. Cool, and there we have a riff that uh, I might not have otherwise written without approaching it from the drums first standpoint. Now, Which is kind of alarming because it's the drums he picked are just, it's a blast beat. You know, it doesn't get uh, much more devoid of variance than that type of beat. Uh, so, but what he proceeds to do later on, let me find here, um, this is where he really starts to lose me and um, it's pretty alarming because he wants to develop a sense of melody over what he's doing. Uh, and the, the, the fucking computer shit is so advanced now that he, there's templates that you can manipulate here that, that I'll show you it's where it's, it's fucking, it's nuts. Like what he's able to do with basic melody lines, just shifting the keys of certain segments of it. And you can build a melody that's already pre-written, but you can manipulate it enough where it's kind of yours. Uh, but having the building blocks at your disposal like that, that's that's where you lose me. Now, another thing that I use to write riffs in a similar fashion is easy keys. And I know what you're thinking. Taylor, keyboards aren't metal. Well, they can be. Let me show you how keyboards can be metal. So let's open up an instance here of easy keys too. And you could use, you know, any instrument you want. I like easy keys. So we have a similar thing going on here that we did with Easy Drummer where we have these MIDI grooves. This is just really nice. It makes things easy. Now, this probably won't go with this song. Now where this differs a lot from using something like Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer to uh, help your songwriting process is uh, you kind of have to have some understanding of like notes and keys a little bit. So if you load this up, you might think like. <laughs> sounds like ghost or something. You know what I mean? Maybe that's not what you're going for. But uh, what we can do here is we can actually change the key. So we're in a C major key right now. But what if we were in a C minor key? A little bit more sad, a little bit. Still kind of happy though, right? 
So we're gonna drag this in here. We're gonna drag this to the song parts section here so that way you can see everything. And then it shows you the different chord clusters, I guess you would refer to them as. So we can actually open this up here and we can double click this. Uh, you can see we have a B flat thing going on here. You know, we can play around with different stuff. There's just the C minor there, but let's uh, let's make this like a C. Okay, that's pretty evil. And in these variations, we even have other variations. So it's pretty crazy, right, how he's able to just take these existing patterns and um, manipulate the keys of certain segments uh, to create an entirely new melody. Well, not new melody, but different shades of an existing melody. But given that I'm so melodically driven, that's where I become kind of terrified because this, you know, I, I had always thought that if, if we go ahead and let AI replace everything they at least can't replace the sense of melody of the player and i still do believe that to an extent but this shit has proven me that uh it could be coming sooner than later so let's hear where he winds up we want to grab the midi and we just want to drag this down here <laughs> You know, and something like that works. Let's just roll with it. These don't have to be perfect. You can always go through and revise. Sometimes it's more important to just get the idea out so that you have something like some scaffolding to build off of than it is to try and get it perfect before you have anything recorded. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, this is pretty, pretty sick. We are going to glue that. Let's put it in place. It's pretty cool. We need drums though, right? And what do I hear in my, I hear a lot of double bass. A lot of double bass here. Let's. You know what? This would actually work right here. So because everything was uh, kind of set to the same tempo, you could just drag and drop apparently your your drums and shit um it's pretty crazy i have tried to write i have written music with a computer and not a guitar before and uh the melody the melody voicings were still me but i found myself being locked into tempos too much and that natural fluctuation that i would normally do to kind of give myself a nice dynamic here and there was not replicated and then I wound up having songs that were entirely in the same tempo uh, and I had to uh, go in and actually change enough of the parts to reflect that bit of humanness uh, that is missing from this kind of thing but as you can see he wound up by just manipulating that that single bit of a template he manipulated it enough where it sounded metal you know that minor kind of sound uh, and then he plays you know your basic building block uh, tonality for death metal over it to make a death metal a symphonic death metally sounding passage uh, this is fucking nuts to me uh, I uh, I understand it but if you would have told me that this is going to be an option for me for most likely free um, if you would have told me this 20 years ago, I would have lost my goddamn mind. Uh, but let's see where he winds up at the end. Final thoughts. Let's see here. You know, if we wanted to do that. So he changed it to be symphonic sounding from that basic piano sound before. Uh, much more like a Flesh God Apocalypse type of sound. Um, pretty crazy. And we can use all that and easy keys. Why not? Just layer it up. All 
All right, like you guys can see, there are just a ton of different possibilities. You can get in and you can have a lot of fun with these programs. Regardless of any sponsorship with this video, I use Easy Keys. So you can see the excitement that he has on his face and it's cool, you know, when you're um, learning how to compose to, to find these new avenues to do it. But what he doesn't realize is that because the drums are a template, because the melody is a template, uh, two of the three things that he built his riff out of is not a songwriter, he's not a composer, he's a DJ, he's a compiler, an assembler, and I'm not going to assume that he writes a majority of his stuff like this. This is his idea of what you can do if you get stuck. My idea of what you can do if you get stuck is to stay stuck and not try, because if you force it, uh, you are going to be betraying the ideas of what should inspire you. If you're going to be inspired um, to get out a message, to, be, to have like a story in mind, to have that spirit first type of, of uh, I know what I want to get on the table, you probably shouldn't have writer's block, especially for the first riff of the song. Um, you know, and obviously you're going to have a degree of shifts here and there to better tell your story. Um, usually I write from A to Z. I start with the first note and end with the last note and everything flows pretty naturally. Um, but I, I, I can't speak on behalf of other people that can compose. Uh, but based on my own experience, I, I physically have to stop myself from composing or I'll have this huge back catalog like I do now of more unrecorded material than recorded material, which is very depressing to um, admit, but I don't want to get ahead of my band. I want to make sure that we're all excited at the same level for whatever material we're bringing in. So I kind of force myself to not write, which ends up, you know, not being healthy for me either. Uh, but I don't think that it, as cool as these things are, as cool as these ideas are to like just fuck around with, I don't think this should help you. I don't think you should want to seek this kind of avenue out to write music. Uh, this like uh, drag and drop idea of of uh, preconceived ideas, like it just it it fucking blows my mind that uh, you can compile something like this and sit back and feel good about it being your riff or your song. Uh, but you know that's kind of the world we live in now. Uh, but yeah, just want to do share my thoughts on this. Once again, I don't dislike this guy. I think uh, you know, out of all the personalities I've seen on on YouTube, he is one of the more digestible um, and humble guys. So I do like that about him. But um, it it makes me sad because I can tell that he is excited about death metal. He wants to understand death metal. He probably understands a lot about it now. But this is an inherently uh, backwards approach to composing um it does not make sense to me but you know maybe other people can see value in it so so yeah thanks for listening